Hey Ruganath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator of the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's Friday, Friday's study of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, we're going to dive into some uh, in, in, in new territories today, Kastuba. Yeah, yeah, want to ex- explain? Um, sure. It's just that uh, we just ended Chapter 14 which was, uh, it kind of like was the end of a big, long section of the fifth canto. And now the rest of the fifth canto is some very interesting stuff, but a lot of it is like, um, we need a strategy because like it goes on for chapters just about like measurements of different planes, different uh, of the universe. And, you know, it, it, a lot of it gets very technical, and, and I think we just need to summarize some of it. So, yeah, we were thinking um, we need to develop a strategy. It might take a few days to do that. <laughs> so, so, so we're giving you some transcendental filler, not bad filler today, but it's actually quite wonderful. It might oh, yeah, be the essential yeah. teachings of the of of the Bhagavatam. But until we figure out a strategy of how to m- move around this stuff because the Bhagavatam it gets very technical talking so from planets to measurements to family lineages you get a pages and pages of family lineages yeah yeah so so um we'll come back with a you know we'll return to the fifth canto on Monday and I think we'll do Q&A both days this weekend and today we'll do a little something different maybe we'll examine a verse or two or even this nugget we, who knows we may just like expand this nugget you know what I would like show. to do because do I would like to we have a you know we have regular zoomers they show up every day practically these people I know their faces yeah. Sega Sierra how Timothy Tucker Karuna's mom I know them all like they're my oldest friends but maybe we can unplug un- unmute somebody and they can do it live so if you're on zoom uh write us a question and just put zoom in the in the, in the Zoom question, and then maybe we can un, unmute you and you can do it live. What do you think about that? So if they write into Wisdom of the Sages 108, right, I'll be there the, on Zoom. Yeah, and then you'll be there, and then you get it live. What do you think okay. of that, Zoomers? Try that. And you want to join us on Zoom, just email Miss Mara, Wisdom of the Sages 108 at gmail.com. All right. Okay. Um, let's... Is there something else you want to talk about? You look. You want, you well, we ha- have a couple like announcements, a and I'm yourself. going to sing you a song, and then we're going to. Well, let's have going. the announcements first, and then you can sing your song. Yeah, hold on, your song. Uh, <laughs> we know you want to sing, Rogan. <laughs> you always want to sing. <laughs> Leslie Vente subbing Josh Kane's Asana class this morning for our Patreon members at 10:30 oh. a.m. Eastern time. What's going on with Josh? Bakshi. Is he okay? Uh, yeah, his grandmother passed away actually. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so we're sending our condolences. Um, we have Bhakti Recovery Group meetings today at 12.30 and 1. And then this Sunday is the Urban Davy program through the Bhakti Center oh, yeah. at 11 a.m. And it's our dear friend, Danya, as a special guest. Oh, so that's for ladies. They can check that out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What time is that? You said 11 a.m.? Yeah, 11 to 12.30. And you can find 11? more info on the Bhakti Center website. You go to bhakticenter.org. If This is for the ladies. No men allowed, Raghunath, okay? Urban Davy. 
the, and they'll have done, what is the subject that she's going to speak about? Do you know? Oh boy, give me a second to find. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, she's working on that. Hold on that one. Hold on that's a, that one. That's a lady sangha, right? While Ladies. you're at the Bhakti Center website, go to the uh, Wisdom of the Sages event and sign up for our Wisdom of the Sages retreat in New York City. I'm so excited. With um, Swami. Here at Super Soul, we're going to start chanting the Jagannath Astik. I'm getting ready for uh, uh, Lord Jagannath and the Rathiatra Festival. Okay. And uh, that's going to be part of our regular of sadhana, everybody. You good with that? That's our regular sadhana. Okay. And, um, yeah, so check us out on June 9th, 10th, and 11th at in New York City. You can hang with all me, Mara, Kostuba, and uh, it's a weekend of uh, singing and storytelling and Dancing. transcendental topics. And then, of course, going to the Rathiatra Festival and pulling Lord Jagannath. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. We're hanging at our table. We'll get some cute Hanging at our table. table. Bring some merch. Okay. Are you gonna... We had a merch fiasco last year. <laughs> well, the we fiasco like, is that you're so disorganized. That the well, end I like... got the merch. What did you do? I sold all the merch. Why I know, and I fun. kept the money. Get it? <laughs> yeah. That's how okay. it works. At the end, I was like, hold it. I don't think I saw one dime from that whole thing. <laughs> hey, yes, you did. Is this How did it work with your band? You're traveling all this time. Uh, you know, we had merch managers. I couldn't yeah, figure that out. Because you, you want to could, give could some away. And the, uh, you got to give. I give too many things away. I don't think that's the thing. I think you just lose it all. <laughs> I lose it? I put it in one pocket, and my kids ask for 10 bucks for a... A yeah. fried dough, and I give them some money, and it just gets confusing. Okay. Don't let me handle the money or the merch personally. Just keep <laughs> okay. it out of my thing. I'll lead the songs while we're sitting on the ground. Okay. Speaking of songs. Speaking of songs. Rosen flows and angel hair and ice <laughs> oh, cream no. castles in the air and feather canyons everywhere. Looked at clouds that way. You know where I'm going with this? I know where you're going. Now the only block the sun. They rain and they snow on everyone. So many things I would have done, but clouds got in the way. I've looked at clouds <laughs> from both sides now, from up and down and still somehow. It's clouds illusions I recall. I really don't know clouds, Kostuba. At all, very spiritual song, my friend. Well, I would say it. I would, you know, what I would, how I would <laughs> categorize this in terms of like from the Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam goggle point of view. Ha, ha, yeah, put your Bhagavatam this, goggles on and figure out this song. This song, both sides now, written by Joni Mitchell. You know, first of all, let's recognize that this song is a great song, by the way. It's it's I mean in terms of lyrics it's mas it's mastery like this is real poetry this is real art this is real writing right but it touches something so deep in people uh, this song has been recorded over uh, there's a, over a thousand different recorded versions of this song by her or by other people no not by her <laughs> by, oh. <laughs> by I was like I people. take two <laughs> take two <laughs> no it was actually do, do you know who actually first had the hit with it. Oh, it's not her? I thought it was her. No, it was Judy Collins that had the first hit with it. You know, you know too much about music. I don't know. You don't have to resent that. You can just accept <laughs> it. You can just hear what I said. Okay, <laughs> go on. But then she went on to have a hit with it. And then, like, as I mentioned, this song, is it, it touches something so deep within people that, you know, so many people have wanted to record it. But I would say what this song is, it's like we, we've been talking, you know, the past couple of weeks about looking at the world with two eyes. Right, with spiritual optimism mm -hmm. and with material pessimism. I would say that it's not exactly that here, but it is looking with both eyes. It's, it's each, there are three kind of like stanzas, I suppose you could say, you know, um, where one of them is looking at something in a positive light. Oh, aren't clouds wonderful? Aren't they beautiful? They're so fluffy and, you know, floating around and they're just like angel hair floating in the sky. And then you look at it with it from the other, then life changes, you know, there's a shift in your life. And then, you know, she's looking, oh, they just block the sun, they rain, you know, it's just like, and, and then in the end, and this is, to me, this is the real um, interesting line in the summer. She says, okay, I've looked at clouds from both sides now, 
by the way, it's not just clouds. It's clouds is one section of the song versus clouds. Love is another oh, section yeah. of the song. And then life is life another section general. of the song. All are very, very almost appearing tangible, but in retrospect, seem like what happened? Okay, well, that's my it's, it's like a blur. So so she said, you know, I've looked at clouds from both sides now from up and down, right? With positive, negative, and still somehow, even with all of my examining it, right? Even with all of my speculating about it, even with all my feeling it going through the emotions of it, and still somehow it's clouds illusions, I recall. Right? When mm -hmm. I look back, it appears to me it's just an illusion. Right. It, it, it clouds is such. See, this is why this is such great songwriting. You know, she's starting off with clouds, but then she's going to pull it into these more fundamental experiences of like the, 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 the human, you know, the human experience. So she, when she's looking back, she's saying it was an illusion. It was like one thing one moment and then it transformed into something else. And then it was gone. You know, so it's to me, it's a song of when someone looks at life and they go from karma to Guyana, right? Like they go from, you know, me, me and the gimme, gimme. I wouldn't quite call this sick of it all, but kind <laughs> of like um, the, the disillusionment of the world, right? You know, I, I was, you know, she was 23 years old when she wrote this song. Mm. But what people say is like, you know, and she, you know, she re-recorded it like, you know, like when she's like a, 70 year old woman or something like that you know and um, it still makes per because it's it's a song of it's a song that's like born of life experience and and uh and life's questions and life's and, questions and, and, and in the end looking back and saying it was an illusion right? mm. it was an illusion and, and it's got that kind of melancholy going through the whole thing right through the whole thing even yeah. in the music sort of um yeah so it's, so it's it, kind it, of it's a something beautiful song in that sense it's, you know, it's the it's early movie towards Ghana. The early questioning of life, uh, uh, the questioning of like um, the stability of all these things, life, love, yeah, and clouds. It's duality, right? It's, it's yeah. Duality. Why don't you read the next thing about love? Can you? Can you? I, I don't know what you're talking. <laughs> you're I don't know so what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you just read the, the part about clouds. I was going to say, now read the part about love. It says moons and Junes and Ferris wheels. Oh, yeah. That part. I lost my spot. Moons and Junes. Moons and Junes. So this one's about love. I get, I get, I understand what you're saying. Moons and Junes and Ferris wheels. The dizzy dancing that you feel as every fairy tale comes real. I've looked at love that way. Okay. So that was the. The, you know, yeah. the, the, she's deep in the illusion of it all. Deep in the illusion of love. Illusion. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but now it's just another show, and you leave them laughing when you go. And if you care, don't let them know. Don't give yourself away. Okay. So I've looked at. So, oh, so slow down, slow down. One mm -hmm. verse at a time. Slow down. <laughs> I don't want you to get caught up. <laughs> the melody there <laughs> he's just carried away but um okay it's just another show right and you leave him laughing when you go you get humiliated by the so-called love right it seemed like it was a ferris wheel it was a dizzy dancing going on and, and now it's like you're feeling crushed you're feeling humiliated you're feeling like it was just a show it wasn't real mm. and you don't let them know you don't give yourself what you harden yourself right that's another experience that that's that's the flip side. That's the duality of this thing that we call uh, lowercase love, right? Lowercase love. OK, so now I've looked she... at love from both sides now from give and take and still somehow it's love's illusions that I recall. It's love, love's illusions that I recall. I really don't know love at all. Yeah, I'm gonna I, cry. I'm I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't need. I didn't need this this morning. <laughs> so so again, I look back at it. What do I know about it? All I know is that it's an illusion. Somehow I'm looking at young illusion. Tommy Fawcett over here on my right, who's, you know, he's How just old is Tommy so Fawcett? green. He's 18 years old. Yeah, 
It's just he's, he's got there's a whole world of illusions waiting for you, sir. <laughs> Choose correctly. OK. Oh, God. But we're going to I'm going to share something with you at the end of this that's going to lift you up. OK, good. OK. All right. Now life. Now life. Tears and fears and feeling proud to say I love you right out loud. Dreams and schemes and circus crowds. I've looked at life that way. Tears and fears and feeling proud to say I love you right out loud. Okay. Um, oh, but now, old friend. Wait, wait. Oh, but now, old friends, they're acting strange and they shake their heads. They tell me I've changed. Well, something's lost, but something's gained. I'm living every day. In living every day. In something's living lost every day. Something's, something's gained. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, in the end, you, you, what do you say? It's like, well, that's life. You know, it's up and down. It's up and down. You gain something, you lose something. It's I'm, every day. That's what it is. It's I'm, not the dance I thought it was. It's not hell either. It's kind of up and down, you know? Right. Of course, unless your life was hell. There's people who've had really hellish life, and then there's a well that shift frame, too, and how they frame it out too. I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose, and still somehow, you know, it reminds me of that guy that uh, me and Parman under met in Scotland, which is also in my book. But um, you know, we met this. We, we were walking around Scotland. I'll just tell the story briefly, and um, we were on tour, and we didn't look like devotees, but we had neck beads on. Um, and some old man came out of the, uh, a shop, like a tourist shop and just uh, said in a hard Scottish accent that we barely understood, are you devotees? How what did and, it sound like? Oh, you devotees? I don't know. I can't do it. I was like, <laughs> I was like what? And I was like, he was yelling, <laughs> yelling at us. Like, you devotees. <laughs> and, 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 and then we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're devotees. And he goes, you know, I met the, I, I met the Swami. I met the Swami. I was friends with George Harrison. Oh, the Swami. Yeah, we used to visit him at the manor. I'm, I'm summarizing this. We used to visit him at the manor in England. Okay. But and he would always tell us to surrender to Krishna. And, you know, I never took it seriously. And George got serious about it, but I never took it seriously. I mean, it was it was the 70s, man. Everything was great and the women were beautiful and the drugs were there. And I don't know how George took it seriously, but I, I couldn't take it seriously. And then he's just stopped after sort of glorifying the seventies. Then he just stopped and he said, but now I'm an old man mm. and I've, you know, I've gone through life. I've made a lot of money and then I lost a lot of money and people came into my life and now they're gone in my life. He was basically summing up relationships <laughs> in life. I've got some money and I've lost some money. Right. I fell in love and then I was betrayed. My heart was broken and I felt like that. I had some kids, now they're grown and gone. And he goes, and now I'm an old man. I should have listened to the Swami. He, he told, told me, me just to surrender to God and everything would be okay. Should have listened to the Swami. He said, his whole countenance changed. I should have listened to the Swami. He did a 180 and went back in the shop and even though he saw some devotees and and uh, he saw me in Paramananda and he probably had some like a little bit of like a wake up call or a little bit of remembrance for me in Paramananda. That was like this was our wake up call. Mm. It was the young. Christ yeah, Christ learn. Krishna sent this guy to us like, hey, you're in a band, you're on tour. It's going really good. Don't forget that this is your future, too. Mm. It was like a double wake up call. You know, that's. I was walking down the street yesterday, Raghunath, Tell and me. Uh, I bumped into a, a really, I'm not going to mention his name. It's someone that you know, um, mm. lives in my neighborhood. I, I bump into him every now and then. But if someone, I used to teach him Bhagavad Gita. He used to, like, he asked for private classes on, like, Bhagavad Gita or Bhakti in general. I forget exactly. Um, and uh, I saw him walking down the street, mm. and he was kind of lost in thought. And I just kind of said, hey, what's going on? Man? And uh, and he was like, happy to see me. And, and then uh, he said, we're kind of like in the middle of the street. Like I was crossing the street one way and he was crossing the other. And we kind of met in the middle. So it had to be a short, a short exchange. <laughs> yeah. So that we wouldn't get run over. Um, but he just said to me, hey, we got it. 
I would really love to talk to you. Really, really got. To, I really need it, you know. Mm. Like, like he needed to to open his heart, you know, and uh, share his head and get some, hopefully, some kind of spiritual perspective on it, you know. By the way, insert squirrel here. Not a squirrel. Insert a little pause. When you take this stuff seriously and explain it to people, you become their deepest, most intimate friend. Mm. Go ahead. Okay. So, so anyway, I was just sharing, but you know, what you're saying is making me think of that. It's like, this is how life works. This is, this is, this is how it works. It's meant to make us, it's, it's, it crushes us to some degree. It, it, it makes us, it pinches us in different ways. And the response to that is meant to be like, what's it about? Are there any answers to this? Mm. If we're really cold and cynical, we say there are no answers to this. Or just exhausted, just exhausted. maybe. I mean, exhaustion may lead us to finally saying, "Okay, what are the answers?" I mean, it may be like that too, right? But but it may be that we have psychological issues that are making us say there are no answers to this. Mm. But there are wisdom traditions, you know, that are. And, and in my mind, you know, I've I've found this bhakti tradition to to be the most thorough, you know, the most complete, the most, you know, refined, you know, in in providing it. It's not the same answers are there in other traditions, but I find here it's particularly. Um, you know, consistent and and well rounded and and thorough. So so in any case, you know that's this is what life's meant to do. Now there's not now you just read the there's a little bit left to the song, but it's more or less the same thing, right? She's just saying yeah. it's life's illusions that I recall. I really don't know life at all. You know, I really don't know life at all. That's that's her thing. And I think this song is so profound when people hear it at any age. You know, she was a young lady when she wrote this song. Somehow had that artist insight you know that's that's a real you know that that's a that's a real gift when you're like a, a young artist and you can express something that sounds like it's coming from someone that's really lived uh, right uh, you know their whole life and maybe something that you carry from a previous life a bit you know those feelings inside and in and, and those ideas but um so you know to hear this it's just there's something sad and beautiful about this song right how mm. she expresses it but um, what I wanted to share with you, Raghunath, is that uh, another very special artist, actually, when he heard this song, she, she was just, again, she was just a young lady. I think she was 23 years old. Maybe she was tw maybe she, even younger when she wrote it. Maybe when she recorded it, she was 23 years old. But when um, Pete Seeger first heard this song. Now, by the way, before the show, yeah. I was like, "Who's Pete Seeger?" And, every, and Mara and, and Kostuba mocked me because I did not we know. Even, I thought, it, well, I Paul, thought it was the other Seeger, Bob Seeger, <laughs> and I don't even know him. <laughs> oh, but because the, the reason why why uh, Mara's jaw dropped is because you're like you're totally this upstate guy, like try, you know, wanting to live off the land and bring community together. That's what Pete Seeger was all about. He was like this right. guy. Well, I'm doing it with Kirtan, not with Bob Seeger. No, but I'm just saying he's the kind of guy that you should know about. You know, he's as Christina is saying on a chat. Oh, look, the whole message board is turning saying, against me now. Saying. I've had enough of you all. He's a Hudson Valley staple. OK, <laughs> he's he, they call him the patron saint of Beacon, New York. You know, he, he lived in Beacon, New York. And really he but he goes way, way, way back. He was an okay. old guy. You know, he's the guy that broke Bob Dylan, you know, and he's the he's the um. But he was this beautiful man that was really all about, hey, let's get together, sing meaningful songs, let's share with one another, let's come together, let's live naturally, let's stand up against injustices, and, and mm. you know, he was a beautiful man, sweet, sweethearted man, you know, sweethearted man, and so he hears this, um, this song, a very touching song, beautiful lyric by Joni Mitchell, and mm. he wrote to her. I, I'll read what I got here that I pulled off the internet. He says, when so this Pete was after the song was published and recorded and it became a hit. I assume I'll read what I got here. It says when Pete Singer turned 50, okay. which was 1969, he sent a note to Joni Mitchell. I think this, I think it was probably 69 when the song, I'm not sure, actually, I'm not sure. But when he was 50 on May 3rd in 1969, he sent a note to Joni Mitchell asking her approval for a fourth verse he penned to both sides now. Okay. Hmm. It follows the three verses that end with her confessing, I really don't know clouds or love or life at all. 
to which Pete added. Mm. Now, if you look at what Pete adds here, um, this is this is this could be coming from a Bhakti Yogi. Okay, now it's written okay. in a very fatherly way, right? He's over twice her age, and he actually does have that life life lived wisdom. But what he shares here, it, it brings a spiritual element into it. Um, that I, think I thought was really nice. I, I may need to sing it with a more masculine voice. Now. Oh, would you like to sing it? You got it? You got it up? Sure. Only okay. because I got a couple positive, oh, everyone loves positive it. I feedback think, on my singing on the message. Karuna, Karuna's wrote. Karuna loves me. She's 10 Rogu's years old. Thank you, is, Karuna. The encouragement. Rogu's voice. She's nine years old. Rogu's voice is very nice when he sings his funny songs. Oh, thank you, Karuna. <laughs> daughter, daughter, don't you know? Yeah. You're not the first to feel just so. So let me say before I go, it's worth it anyway. Someday we all may be surprised. Oh, we'll yeah. wake and open up our eyes. Oh, and then at last we'll realize the whole world feels this way. Okay, now hold it. Hold it. We've all oh, been living. Oh, 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 slow down. Slow down. Ooh, <laughs> slow down. Okay, so he's coming from this mm -hmm. fatherly perspective. Okay. Hey, Joni, you know, you're not the first to feel this way. Daughter. Right. So before I go, you know, I'm going to die. It almost has that a little bit of that kind of thing, you know, like people sharing their wisdom right. before they, they go. So, um, yeah, you're not the first to feel this way. And someday we all may be surprised. Now, to me, this is really getting to the bright, the spiritual optimism. Okay. Especially the next verse that you haven't sung yet. But someday we all may be surprised. We'll wake and open up our eyes. And then at last we'll realize that the whole world feels this way. We, everybody in this world is feeling this melancholy to some degree or another. And if this, we're not feeling now, we will What just happens? What just happens? Where did it all go? What, what, yeah, what? You know, I invested in this like relationship. That? I invested in this business and career. I invested this time, in this home money whatever it is and it seemed great for a bit and then it you know it went up and then it went down you know peaks and valleys mm. um and, and it and it does create a, a kind of melancholy you know there's something in us that's saying it should always be moving up and and just keep moving up and it won't stop moving up it's just not the way that life works but now what he says here it almost could have been written by you know a Vrindavan Bhakti Yogi or something like that. I mean, even anyway, you go ahead and sing it, Raghunath. Right See, but this is what he says. He says the whole world this feels by this Pete way. Seeger. By Pete this Seeger. Right, right, right. Pete Seeger saying, um, this "Little is Lord Krishna gave me sweets. <laughs> no, he jumped he and said. danced." And oh no, that's the okay. I, I added that one. Okay, <laughs> we've all been living upside down and turned around with love unfound. Until we turn and face the sun. All of us, yes. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> I like your voice, too. You gotta go up. <laughs> gotta go up. <laughs> That's it. So, okay. We've all been living upside down. That's the small I or the small L or the, the one eye closed. Um, and turned around with love unfound. I'm loving I'm desperately loving. I'm loving her. That didn't work out. Now I'm loving her. That didn't work out. Now I'm loving him. That didn't work out. We're desperately trying to repose our love in somewhere, something. Sometimes we give up love in humans. Ever meet people like that? I've given yeah. up love in humans. Human, you can't trust a man. You can't trust a woman. I love this dog like like anything. Yeah. This dog will never cheat on me. He'll never. He might cheat on you, actually. Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> The dog will cheat on you. Well, they the dog cheated on you, Ragnar. Went to another master. The meaning, <laughs> but there's no one more lo like loyal than a dog, you know. Yeah. But the idea is like there's a such a strong desire to repose love somewhere or yeah. in something. Yes. Uh, and yeah, so it's it's almost like um, Joni was coming from the Gyanic point of view. Hmm. And then Pete is coming from the bhakti point of view here, where he says, we've all been, you know, to say that we've all been living upside down and turned around. 
Mm. This world is a reflection, right? In the spiritual realm, you 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 repose love, and it's timeless, right? This is the re reflections look exactly like something, but they're backwards or upside down, right? Like Bhag Bhagavad Gita speaks of this world being an upside down banyan tree, a reflected banyan tree. Right? You know what? You know what? I was there. feeling this way. It's such an interesting little Krishna miracle. I was feeling this way yesterday. Me and Mara went for these Joppa walks for a second day in a row during this old Shaker village, um, <laughs> yeah, which is right by yeah. us. And the, See, the, the this Shaker. is why I can't believe you don't know Pete Seeger because he's the kind of guy that would like know the Shakers and the whole thing. Yeah, I'm sure he was a Shaker. Um, but anyway, the Shaker, Shaker community was a, you know, they were a strict celibate um uh, how were they all celibate? <laughs> like they didn't have, that's why they don't exist no more. anymore. I guess it ended quick. <laughs> <laughs> and and what they built was so incredible. And I was just thinking because uh, you know, some of the what places they built were, what architecturally, you mean? Architecturally and and right or down in to the land. Socially. You know, sometimes you see you no know, with the land. And like sometimes you around here, very often you can go in the woods and you see some beautiful old stone wall. The stone walls they built were massive. They built the biggest stone barn in America. I see a stone it, wall behind you right now, we're gonna, I know, I but I'm talking about big ones. It's one thing to build stones that you can lift with your hands. It's another thing to build these, these stones that are literally one ton and just stack them and put them in houses. It's just incredible. And of course, it was bigger at one time. And um it was preserved, and then um, this a, a Sufi organization like moved in there in the '70s, sort of like a commune, and that sort of like has fallen apart. Um, a private school m bought a bunch of the houses. There's a museum part of it, but if you just walk through this sort of sacred area, and you can see, you know, and if you know a little bit about, you know, uh, botany, uh, you know, you can tell exactly what trees they planted, trees that are going to last, generational trees that give fruit or that are good for wood, or, or that give nuts. And I was just thinking to myself, like, they worked so hard. They planted so much. They built so much to last gener generationally. And it's over. Yeah. Like, I'm looking in the woods, and I was like, oh, that tree was probably an important tree to them. And now it's just covered over by the rest of the forest of, of sort of suckers and saplings that have grown up around it. And I was thinking to myself, like, it's over. It's, it's like your all your material investment is over, even though it was a spiritual investment. And then it made me sort of like reframe the whole thing out. Like they didn't lose for their spiritual investment. Maybe we can build a, a beautiful temple and it might crumble, but we didn't lose in our effort to focus. Um, they still got a spiritual payback for the spiritual investment. And even though it may not last, I sometimes look at it like that. Sometimes we're building things on the farm or putting in the floor of the yoga studio. And I think, you know what? Who knows? We could lose this property and it might not. What? Why are you laughing? Oh, well, we, we've come close to losing it many times. <laughs> but I would think, you know what? Who cares? For every moment we've been here, we brought people together. We've had a spiritual experience. We come together. We sing together. We share together. We eat together. We love together. It's wonderful. And it might, if, if it only happens for a moment, it was a win. Everything else of the earth is a cloud. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm with that's, Pete Seeger. Okay. Well, what, the, the line that Pete Seeger, first of all, he says, we've all been living upside down. And turned around we're all we've been living in this illusion mm. with love unfound and he, he see he goes right to here is the key right mm. until we turn around and face the sun all of us yes everyone right so the, here this is that's pure bhagavatam right there right like this is like the cowherd boys are all facing krishna when they're sitting you know in that circle right when they're all sitting down this is this is the whole point right by here you know in in chaitanya charjamrita you know it's by here mukha one, one turns their face away mm. from that's you know krishna surya sama right krishna is the sun right krishna is that energy which we we just as the the rays of the sun are to the sun 
we are to Krishna. We're made of Krishna's energy, right? Mm. So it, because Krishna has the qualities of eternality and knowledge and ultimately divine bliss, we are made of, of th those are our inherent qualities, right? But because, but we turn away, we turn away and we enter the illusion, right? We want to enjoy separately. It can only be enjoyed in illusion. And then the way that the illusion is programmed is exactly everything that Joni's going through in this song. Clouds are beautiful. They're fluffy. They're good. The whole world is, is, is this beautiful, wondrous place. It's dark. <laughs> right? it's, there's times it's, of the day. There's times of the day that I feel like I'm turning away from the sun. There's t you know what I mean? And then there's mm -hmm. times of the day where I feel like I'm turning towards the sun. It's, it, it, and I, I guess it's a accumulation if you were to tally it up in the course of your life. How much did you turn towards light? How many times did you turn away from light? And uh, maybe maybe it's a sum total of okay, this is how we figure out your next birth. Yeah, you know. Well, you know, it, it's it's. I think there's a formula here that you know when we feel that melancholy, it means we've turned our face, right? We've turned away from the sun, somehow or other. We've turned away from the sun, and the the and there and we look to um what's the word i'm looking for like to relieve that melancholy mm -hmm. in every direction but turning back to the sun right we, we try to find oh I, I need another relationship oh i need another apartment oh i need another job oh you know it's like i need another hobby i need another car i need another yeah. you know the the climax the, the very pinnacle of all of this Vedic literature that we discuss, you know, from the four Vedas to the Upanishads, to Mahabharata, and then ultimately the Puranas, and then the Bhagavad Purana, or the Srimad Bhagavatam becomes like, okay, this is the conclusive teaching now on yoga, right? Mm. And then even within the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavatam builds, right? We're in the fifth canto, but it's gonna keep building till you get to that 10th canto. And within that 10th canto, for the first time, Vyasadeva reveals the sun, the fully, right? He reveals mm -hmm. Krishna, his entire life, right? And um, and and the pinnacle of so so like if the Bhagavatam is like the cream of the Vedas, the condensed form of it, or you know the the, the top of it, then you churn that cream, and you get to the, what is it, creme de la creme? Whip. Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> creme de la creme. The, the cream the, of the cream. The cream of the crop. Yeah, the cream of the cream. And, and, and then that's the 10th canto. And then if you churn the 10th canto. It's the creme de la creme de la creme. <laughs> <laughs> it's the frosting. We're going to getting hungry. <laughs> I'm, I'm starving. <laughs> so, so then what do you have? Then you have the, the Rasalila. Rasalila is the, the creme of the creme of the creme. And, and in the Rasalila. Does we take the, this up a notch even Within more? our Bhakti Yoga Sampradaya, we say that the greatest of all the yogis or yoginis, right, are, are the gopis of Vrindavan, right? No one's love is more condensed, is churned deeper, right, mm. than these gopis, these girls, Krishna's girlfriends. And the way that that leela begins is with um, Krishna, where does he go? To play his flute? Under the Vamsi Vatri. Under the Vamsi Vat tree. So this is a place we really got to put together. You know, I would love let's, to take all our listeners there, you know. Let's take all our people. We should fill that entire courtyard with wisdom. Wouldn't and that be great? People. Light yeah. candles, sing songs, get a flute yeah. player. Get a flute player with our kirtan. Oh, yeah. Sing I went and remember bhajans all day long. I'd be in there on, on Yatra with Radna Swami once with like thousands of people at nighttime at Vamsi Vat. You know, mm. there's that beautiful verse Rupa Goswami shares, right, about all of those illusions in life, all those things that Joni's singing about in the song. If you have an attachment for them, don't go down to Vamsi Vata. Don't go to Vamsi Vat. Yeah, the tree that Krishna stands under, if he plays his flute under that tree, on the bank of the Yamuna River. You'll walk away from the clouds. <laughs> yeah, you will. You, once you see him, you'll you'll lose your attachment for everything else, right? It's kind of a negative, positive verse, right? It's making it sound like it's negative, but it's actually very positive. How many people out there listening on Zoom can understand that verse? Once you see Krishna, once you like experience Krishna, it could be a kirtan, it could be a, a, a pakora, right? Someone offered with love. It could be 
a statement from the Bhagavatam. It could be a scent of incense or the scent of Tulsi being offered or a deity or going to a holy place. How many people have experienced that? Nothing else makes sense anymore in the material world. Even the it stuff you love. Pale. Does any, does any, I'd like to see people on the board, right? Just <laughs> it pales in comparison. Yeah, it you pales know, in it. Sometimes the example is used as like um, people uh, that we see as captivating and uh, even, um, what's the word I'm looking for, in, that we become infatuated by or something like that, become mm -hmm. impressed by in some way, that when placed next to Krishna, it said they're like glow worms. <laughs> Now, what exactly do it? What do is we, a glow worm? It's a worm that glows, right? Are there glow worms? Yeah, there are glow worms. Mary, could you like, look up? We could, you you could see like a firefly. Yeah, if there are fireflies, you could say fire. Yeah. Let's let's just say firefly, right? But glow let's worm is even like because oh, it's just, uh, Henry yeah. says if glow worm is a firefly, and he knows really? a lot of stuff. Henry's very knowledgeable. Yes. What is it? Are you sure he's fly? saying that a glowworm is a firefly, or is he just throwing firefly out there? I don't know. Maybe he just... You got anything, Mayor? Uh, Mara says, a uh, glowworm or uh, is the common name for various insect that glows. They include European common glowworm and other members of... Okay. okay. So they've got a glowworm, right? There's a European common glowworm, and there's other glowworms out there. So, so a glowworm, if you see it at night, it's like, oh, wow, look at that thing. It's lighting up. It's bright. It's incredible. Look at that thing, you know? Right. But as soon as the sun comes up, it, it's got no... They're problem. unnoticeable. You can't even notice it. They're still, no, they're still there. They're, they're just still, unnoticeable. They're still there, glowing around. They're still but, glowing you know, around in the daytime. Just as much and, glow power. But yeah. it's pale in comparison. Yeah. So, as a matter of fact, they start to see like, they start to just seem like bugs. Yeah, so an ordinary right. worm <laughs> or an ordinary fly or something. Yeah. And so that's the interesting thing about Krishna. And you can't quite understand it because it's not like you're, you know, you're wrestling with him or he's, you know, sitting down with you for lunch. It, he's just sort of like you're experience, you're experiencing him. And then all of a sudden your paradigm shifts yeah, and nothing's the same anymore. So the gopis, he, Krishna's underneath that um, tree. And it's the perfect, he's chosen the perfect moment. It's the full moon night, right, in the autumn season, which in Vrindavan is like, it just doesn't get more beautiful and pleasant than that, right? Mm -hmm. And he's, he's standing on the bank of the river underneath a beautiful tree, reaches down into his waist belt right there, pulls out his flute. Right? Mm -hmm. He begins to play the flute. And the sound of that flute is so enchanting. You know, it, it passes through the forest and, and enters into the ears of the gopis in their homes. And the sound enters their ears and goes deep into their hearts, penetrates, right? When Krishna's flute, Krishna has this power with his flute that no other living being has or can do, right? I mean, think of flute, a bamboo flute already is very an enchanting instrument. Yeah. But yeah. imagine it coming from Krishna. It's hard to imagine, it's but it's saying he can even do things like, I mean, this is said when he plays his flute and the gopis hear it, it says like their underwear kind of like becomes loose, you know, it's just like, it's, it's like so powerful that it's, it's powerful like flute. everything that they may do to try to resist him is working against them, you know? Right. And, and um, and, and so they hear this sound, particularly when he plays the fifth note on that flute it's like it's just that's it you know they they mm -hmm. they cannot not follow their heart and so they're all rushing out of their houses in the middle of the night you know and their families are like no 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 you don't go out you know it was a very like what are you doing we're yeah. like young no. girl doesn't run out at night because some boy is playing a flute right they're saying don't go and it's even like the social pressure is so intense that it's almost like if you go, don't ever come back. Yeah, it's like a Romeo and Juliet type of thing. Yeah, kind of like that, you could say. You know, it's, it was okay. a disgrace. You can't do it's this. Disgrace to your family. How many of us have ran to Krishna in disgrace of our family? <laughs> right? True. Our family. It's the same thing. You're a gopi, sir. <laughs> 
and and you know they they were they were um they had the reputation as these spotless reputations you know these yeah. girls right they're yeah. spotless dharmic young ladies yeah perfect dharmic young ladies they can't no their hearts are enchanted their love for krishna is so strong that nothing can that nothing can become an obstacle in the way they they mm-hmm. must go they ignore all social um, regulations. They ignore all family pleas. They risk everything. They give up everything. They run to Krishna, right? Then they get under that tree. They're right there with him on the bank of the river. And Krishna says to them, he teases them, right? But he teases them in such a way where it, it's, it's also more churning, right? He says, well, what are you all doing out here? This isn't right at all. You know, I'm just sitting here playing my flute. You've come out here for like some kind of rendezvous, or something. This is so <laughs> inappropriate that you're so inappropriate. here. You should, yeah, you should all turn around, go back to your homes, go back to your family, worldly duties. Go back to, in one sense, of what he's saying is, go back to your worldly life, enjoy your worldly life, right? Mm. Don't come running out here. And by saying that, by teasing them in that way. What he does is he churns, you could say churns their hearts so where what's in their heart for the first time comes out. It doesn't happen earlier in the Bhagavatam, right? Like even when he stole their clothes mm-hmm. and said to each one of them, come one at a time and I'll give you, he's sitting up in a tree. They're all bathing <laughs> in the river. He takes their clothes, climbs up in the tree. They're in the river with these, with a heart full of these, you know, this um, sublime mixture of, rasa of emotions about you know between embarrassment and and thrill and you know and and uh and they come on a time and they, and they get their clothes back but they don't say anything you know all they said is please give us our clothes back but they didn't open up their hearts and reveal what they feel about him but when krishna tells but at the time of the rasa when they come out at night and krishna says you all go back home now what are you doing here this doesn't make any sense he churns their hearts and then they begin to speak Right. And that message is like it's the churn message of the entire Vedic literature just churned right out. Right. Where they say, Krishna, we don't want all the things of worldly life. We don't want it. We try to, you know, in a sense, what they're saying is uh, when they're speaking, they're they're becoming the example for every soul in the universe of the mood in which we're meant to come at, at what life does to us how you know the ups and downs and the looking at the clouds from this side and that side and love from this side and that side and life from upside and downside Mm. we're meant to get churned through that and then come and stand before krishna with tears in our eyes and say i don't want that world anymore i want you and basically they say please accept us right please allow us to serve you please let us reconnect the more you hear it the more you realize like this is all of us Yes. Because at every stage of our surrender, well, Krishna yeah, is going to make the last line there. All of us, yes, everyone. We, uh, Krishna asks us to make some choice. Yeah. What do you really want? What do you really want? Are you sure you want that? And oftentimes we choose, uh, like again, choose to turn away from the sun. Um, you know, but you, that taste remains. That like the hook has been set. You know, I was another time I was remembering walking in your neighborhood and same thing, met someone like crossing the street yeah. that I, they, you know, when, you know, we do these pilgrimages, we carefully curate them, you know, meet the right people, go to the right places, have the right consciousness. But sometimes I get people who like, I, they're still with me. I still see them on a regular basis. Then sometimes I see them on this pilgrimage. They appear to go deep and then I never see them again. So one lady, I, I ran into the street and I, I didn't see her maybe in seven years. And she's like, and so I, I assume, uh, maybe they just had a horrible time and they just never, you know, just was like, what a waste of time and money. Yeah. But she goes, Raghunath, I, 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 so much has changed in my life. Wow. But I want you to know, I think of India every day. Wow. I think of that every day. So that hook has been set. You got to give this stuff to other people. Like we said earlier, you become their best friend because you give them a type of grounding, a type of stability, 
a type of like a, a, a type of like foundation that the rest of the material world can't offer and mm. they'll never forget it. And we see people too, right? You, you met a person that we've spoke to about this stuff 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And it's like, they're still holding on to it no matter what things have shifted in their life. Right. It's getting late. We need some takeaways, sir. <laughs> what a blow. We could probably, wow. You gotta learn to end it. A huh? little, you're, you're sharing some, so it was so, you're framing such an important message for us. You just cut it so quick. We got, got to just. It's, <laughs> that's material world, man. It just cuts it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Right. Oh, Mara, do you have any takeaways? An apparition. Mara, tell us, tell us, give us a, give us a, a nugget that turns to a takeaway that becomes a goodie. <laughs> I got some goodies for you today. Look at both sides of the illusion. Okay, both sides now. Alrighty. There's a duality of lowercase l love. Mm-hmm. Always up and down. Not a t-shirt, but I get it. Mm -hmm. Listen to the Swami. Take your spiritual life seriously. Listen, listen. to the Swami. That Maybe is just, a shirt. No, no, no. Here's That's a, shirt. a shirt, a mug, a tattoo. Here's an even better shirt. What's I should have listened to the Swami. I should have listened to the Swami. That that shows a deep lamentation yeah. that the, the Vaishnavas feel. I should have listened to the Swami. See, one was in order, listen to the Swami, but when you say, I should have listened to the Swami. Mm, the order sounds pretty good, listen to the Swami. Yeah. I like that one too. Well, that may be a hardcore wow. song, but like. <laughs> listen to the Swami. Do, 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 do. <laughs> to the Swami. I <laughs> break it down. We've been living life upside down. We have been. Yep. We're trying to relieve our melancholy by turning every direction except the sun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Turn towards the sun. The shakers didn't lose. They didn't lose. <laughs> they didn't lose. Okay. I'm going to take you there, Kostuba. We're going to do some. How far you know, is it from where you live? Like 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's go. You know what's interesting? Jiva G Life Coaching's brother went to that private school. So she spent tons of time. Uh, the Shaker private school in Poughkeepsie? No, it's a it's, it's a private school, but it was it's it was purchased by a, a, the private school purchased a bunch of the homes. Is that in the, school in, the in Poughkeepsie? Is that a Shaker school or a Quaker school? I don't know, but I knew they people both, that went to that. You they know the both talking about? shake in ecstatic joy. It's yeah. When they're spir experiencing spiritual ecstasy, there's a shaking going on. Okay. Yes, it is a Darrow School vegan trucker that we're talking what, about. What's that? It's called the Darrow School. Okay. Yeah. There's another school in Poughkeepsie. I forget what it's called. Mm -hmm. It could be a friend's school. Those are the Quakers. They also maybe have Quaker some type school. of physical. You know who went shaking there? going on? I had one or two friends that went there. Holy squirrel! But also, you know that guy Hank from Boston. That guy that was in a hardcore. Yeah, Boston. Reverend Hank. Reverend Hank, he went to I follow him on Instagram. Oh, there you go. He went to that school. Okay. He went to that school. All right. All right. Yeah. We're meant to be churned before we stand before Krishna. Oh, yeah. Churned. And shaked. <laughs> Shaking that And Shake, shake, shake. Do, 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 do. Uh, shake, 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 shake. shake. No, no. no. Why? That's, give, give that's her the her... Shaker's theme song. And? And follow the sound of Krishna's flute. Oh, okay. That's nice. Okay, that's... I would have. I would have. I would have. The last one. I think the last one should have been. Listen. I should have listened to the Swami. That should have been the last. one. Yeah, that could have been the last one. Could have been the last one. Or shake, shake, shake. No, no, that shouldn't have been. What is the thing? What do they say? Shake your groove, groove fang. That's a different one. Is it shake your groove fang? What do they say? That shake your groove thing was. What was it? Taste of honey. And shake, shake, shake your booty. Shake your booty in the sunshine band. Okay, that was it. Bute. Okay. I'm learning it all, Kasuba. Thank you. It's deep education. <laughs> that was a disco era. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I, 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 I didn't realize people would appreciate the singing. <laughs> <laughs> Usually they don't, but today was different. <laughs> Oh, wow. If you're in Florida, the Rafiatra comes to Jacksonville tomorrow on the beach. That is a great place. I've heard it's one of the best Rafiatras. 
But I will say, your Rafi Oxford is quite wonderful. Hey, guess what? Me and Cindy's retreat that we're doing at Super Soul Farm, Madava, is coming. And the retreat sold out. So, but we're going to have an open day. If you want to come up for the Kirtan uh, that evening. So if you're listening to this, you can come up here at Madava. Very excited for next week's Wisdom of the Sages retreat. I think there's a bed left. If anybody's interested, go to the Wisdom of the Sages com events but we got a big crew coming. very excited to see all these others look at martine hi martine good morning to you martine's coming 